For more information about the Beulah Grove Baptist Church, please check us out on YouTube and Facebook or visit our website at BeulahGrove.org. John chapter 2, verse number 5. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. That we all wish that life could be easily reset by hitting control or delete. We wish we could just hit the escape button of life and have a hard reset, a reset to our government, a reset to our economy, a reset to our legal system, a reset socially and culturally, a reset to our educational and even health systems. But may I submit and suggest to you that although those resets are necessary, they're not the ultimate type of resets that we need. The ultimate reset we need is not a hard reset, H-A-R-D, but a hard reset, H-E-A-R-D. The directives of Christ are oftentimes counterintuitive to how we think. Does it make sense to natural logic? Sometimes it sounds crazy and contrary and confusing. But if you want to experience the blessings of God in your life, here it is, five words. Do whatever he tells you. I believe John 2 and 5 is the verse that can help us to see the magnificent and the marvelous hand of God at work in our lives. And I hear you saying, well, what is it that John 2 and 5 tells us to do? Here it is. Do whatever he tells you. If you want joy in your life, do whatever he tells you. If you want peace in your life, do whatever he tells you. It may not make sense. It may be contradictory. It may sound crazy. But do whatever he tells you to do. Because in your act of obedience, I get glory. Here it is. Moses, I can uh, enable you to cross the Red Sea. And I can cut... A pathway through the Red Sea, that's divine sovereignty, God says, but human responsibility is, can you hold out the rod? Okay, uh, Joshua, I can bring down the walls of Jericho if you will march around and shout as I tell you to do so, but th that's divine sovereignty, but can you at least take on human responsibility and march and shout when I say so? I can feed the 5,000, but th that's divine sovereignty, but human responsibility is, can you at least go get the last lunch? I can bring down Goliath, that's divine sovereignty, but human responsibility is, can you get a stone and a sling? I, I can, I can help you get a job, that's divine sovereignty, human responsibility is, can you fill out the application? Here's the blessing. And what they received as the act of obedience was greater and better than what they started with. <laughs> the Bible says, the Bible says that the guest at this wedding was like, hold on. You've saved the best for last. Because <laughs> when you obey, it's always better than what you started with.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's another Sunday morning. It's another morning that we get to lift our hands, that we get to give God glory. It's another morning to worship him. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and stand to your feet. Let's begin to welcome God in this place. It's time for praise and worship. Hallelujah. There's a praise on the inside, and I'm ready to let it out this morning. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. We honor you, God. We magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah.
right in this place. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Oh, God. We bless his name. Hallelujah. And because we know that he hears us, we can always take it to the Lord in prayer. about you, but I'm just excited about God on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We magnify your name, Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear. What a friend who bless to carry everything. 
worship the scripture it's coming from psalm chapter 16 verses 7 through 8 it says i will bless the lord who guides me even at night my heart instructs me i know the lord is always with me i will not be shaken for he is beside me hello my name is malar lukenge i'll be doing the prayer Dear Heavenly Father, please bless this day. Uh, I ask that you answer everyone's prayers, all their needs, and all their, all their wants. Amen. Good morning, good morning, Beulah Grove, church, family, and friends. I am Baji Mukenge. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Xavier Kriegmer, and his wife, Dr. Chandra Kriegmer, and their family, welcome to the Beulah Grove worship. I am delighted that you decided to worship with us this morning, and we are also delighted to share and worship with you. Let us thank us, 
Let us thank unto the Lord, for he is truly good. I pray that the worship and fellowship through the word and songs of praise encourage and strengthen you in the Lord. Let us continue to remain safe and mindful of the safety of each other during this time. Let's be G3. Let us continue to grow together generation to generation. May God continue to bless you richly and the peace of Christ be with you abundantly. Another Sunday where we can come together in the house of the Lord and worship our great God. And if you know how great he is and you know the blessings that you have because God has favored you, would you just take a moment right now and praise him? Look at somebody and say, he favored me. In spite of it all, he favored me. When nobody else was there, he favored me. And I can't help but praise him because he favored me. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Doesn't it feel good to know that you're favored by the Lord? I tell you, it's a blessing. And truly, we thank God for his favor. Because his favor shows up right on time and in time to help us through our times that we find ourselves in. So we thank God for being a present help in the time of our need. Quickly, just to share a few announcements with you. Um, we want to thank God, first of all, for allowing us to, to come together and have such a powerful worship on last weekend. Amen. Amen. Our Resurrection Sunday was a blessing. We were thanking God for all those who were in attendance, those who showed up. I know it's spring break week, so a lot of people have already broke. So virtual is probably packed. It's probably full of the capacity in virtual. Move over. I can't get over on the virtual couch so I can pray. So, but we thank God for those who are worship with us virtually as well as those in person. Matter of fact, let's give God praise for those who join with us. Amen. Beulah Grove, just so you know, when we, when we thank God for those worshiping us virtually, we are really acknowledging people from across the United States of America. Amen? Amen. We, we're reaching and touching lives in a lot of places. So I just want you to be aware that, that you might be shouting right here in Augusta, Georgia. But while you shouting here in Augusta, Georgia, somebody in California praising right along with you the same God. And isn't that a powerful thing to think about? That when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us and our souls cry out, hallelujah. Somebody in Texas is crying out, hallelujah. Somebody in Virginia is crying out, hallelujah. Somebody over in South Carolina is praising his great name. And that's good news to know that we are not the only ones who are trusting in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank God for that. We thank God for the blessing of our worship experiences and how we're, things are going as God continues to bless and move us forward. Also, we want to thank those who came out yesterday for our Grove Gathers. Amen. Our Grove Gather session. Now, we didn't have the normal uh, group of the, the many we are normally used to seeing, but we had some great dialogue and conversation that I think was very healthy, very fruitful. And if you have not come to Grove Gathers on a Saturday yet, don't worry, there's another one coming up in June and we want to see you there. The reason why is because we find strength when we come together. We find strength when we come together. And that strength comes through this, under, through this experience of having healthy communication and dialogue amongst each other as the church. We want you to be well informed of what we're doing, what projects are going on, what things have been accomplished, what things are ongoing, what challenges we face. So that way, even as you understand these things, you know how to be praying for your church. And then you also find out how you can get involved with your church. I ain't get too many amens on that. Pastor, we good on Sunday. But we need to be good on more than Sunday because we're not just the church on Sunday morning. Amen. 
Amen. We are the body of Christ continually and throughout our lives. So uh, our next one will be in June. We thank those who did attend and we thank God for allowing us to have such a great time together and sharing and those who shared and provided some some insight and some things that we can look at to begin to continue to move forward. We thank you for it. And also as we continue to move in a, in a healthy and a viable and an exciting direction, we're excited about our summer explosion coming up 2024. Amen. Summer explosion is on its way. And that means that you ought to get registered on our website. The application is there. There's an ability to pay through the website as well for the registration fees and all. And our cap number for students in our summer explosion program is 150. So the, please, ma'am, please, sir, don't wait to the last minute. The word is out. We're sharing it through our social media. It's getting out to the community that some explosion is coming up. So we don't want to, you to miss out with your children here because you decide to wait to the last minute. Amen. Get them registered. We look forward to another great and exciting summer. And if you're looking to be a part of our team as a teacher, uh, we look forward to having those teachers. Please contact the church and ask to speak Ms. Josephine Jones. And that way you can join the team and help us have success in preparing our kids for the next year of school. We're excited about it and looking forward to it. So we look forward to sharing together in that experience. It begins uh, the registration began April 1st, and it will go through May 24th. You go on the website, but if you need a hard copy application, come by the church, and you can get you a hard copy to fill out as well. So we have many ways that you can get the registration done. Just make sure you uh, communicate so we can be a support to you. Also, uh, we have revival coming up April 15th through the 17th. Amen. April 15th through the 17th, we are being revival. Bishop Craig Oliver will be with us. Come on out to revival, y'all. Come out to revival. Come be blessed in revival. Don't let revival miss you uh, this year. We're excited about revival. Looking forward uh, to what the Lord will do in that time as he revives us. We're excited. We thank God for Bishop Craig Oliver who comes and blesses us. Uh, often our spring or our fall revival. So we're excited for him coming to be with us. Also. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So we'll be celebrating. We're excited about that. Look forward to it. Um, also, we want to make known to you that um, um, on second and fourth Sundays, we still have our children and youth worship. Uh, we didn't, they didn't do it last month because of Women's Day and when everybody be in worship together. And then Palm Sunday was Family and Friends Day for us. So everybody was here worshiping together. So uh, they were not here. Therefore, we would want you to know that we still are doing second and fourth Sunday for Children and Youth Church. So that is still available. So we look forward to next Sunday, uh, our Children and Youth being back together again. Also, we continue to give our deepest uh, sympathy and our, uh, to those who have experienced loss. We pray for those families and ask that you be in prayer as well. Also know that our Grief Share ministry is up and running and doing great things. They're touching the community. They're reaching many people. They just finished their last session and their next session will begin to start again soon. So if you know someone who's dealing with grief, who's going through it and needs that support, we ask that you help them get in contact with the church so that they can be a part of that experience so that they can understand their grief and know that grief does not have to carry them they can carry their grief. Amen? Amen. Amen. Last but not least, allow me to say this today, and I hope you'll stand to your feet with thunderous and roaring praise to God for these persons that I'm going to acknowledge and recognize in our presence today. That's our security ministry. Amen? All of us have a reason to praise God for them because rain or shine, cold or hot, our security ministry is out making sure that while you're in here praising, you ain't got to worry about who's in your vehicle, who's bothering what you have. And when you leave out of here, you get in your vehicle and drive off. Amen. So we thank God for our security ministry. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. We are grateful for you. And we thank you. We're grateful that we can celebrate you today. And we thank our trustees for and our deacons that have stepped up to the plate to allow our security ministry to be in worship this morning. Amen. Let's give God praise. That, that's supportive ministry. Amen. Supportive ministry. So we thank God for them as well. And I thank God for you. Give God praise for yourselves. Amen. 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 So we thank God for you all. We love you. And we'll talk again when we get to the word. Good morning. It's giving time. It's giving time and we give generously because we have received generously. We give gracefully because we have received gratefully. We give to glorify God because he deserves all the glory. Let us then give graciously with an attitude of gratefulness that we may glorify the Lord our God together. Please pay attention to the screen so that you may see the various ways that you can participate during this partial segment of worship. To the visitors de desiring to contribute today offering, please raise your hand so the ushers may come unto you. Thank you.
Father, we just thank you now. We thank you for the opportunity to give back what is right for the us. We thank you for those who gave. We thank you for those who wanted to give but didn't have an opportunity to give. And we just pray now that you just bless this land, bless this to be fertile soil. And not only that, that we ask now that none may go like it, that next time that they can give boldly and declare that you are good. Have thy own way now. We ask now that you just bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, amen.
give God praise for our young people, reminding us of the love of God for us. We thank God for loving us, loving us in spite of us, loving us out of who he is and all that he has promised to be and do in our lives. We thank God for his love. Amen. While you are praising God and thanking God for our young people as they have blessed us in song, I invite you to uh, stand with me all over the sanctuary and you can join me in Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Verses 13 and 14. Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14. And while you look for that, just bow your head for a quick moment of prayer. Father, we praise and thank you for your love. We thank you for those children that have come forth and out of the mouth of babes and infants, you still inhabit and still send forth praise. And as we hear their words echo, not only into our minds, but our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would prepare our hearts now to receive the word. May the word speak to us. May the word encourage us. May the word challenges us, challenge us and change us. We ask these things now in Christ's name. I pray we love you, Lord, and thank you. Amen. Psalm 27, uh, verses 13 and 14. I want to read these in your hearing. Psalm 27, verses 13 and 14. Word of God says from the New King James Version this morning, says this to us. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. This morning I want to share from this subject, remaining confident in the Lord. Remaining confident in the Lord. The far-reaching shadows which are cast in seasons of uncertainty and adversity can cause to arise in every believer an eager desire to see the light of the Lord to shine through and him make his goodness known toward us. We have a want for relief. We want immediate answers to our prayers that we pray. We want a revelation from the Lord that makes us to know that the trouble we face won't last always. And when it seems that the Lord is delayed in bringing to pass what we believe would bring us that relief, we instead become vulnerable to acts of desperation that are guided by undisciplined desires. Undisciplined desires are those desires that cater to your wants, give you what you want, what you like, what you think you need, and it's not according to the Lord's will. You want those things that satisfy you, but they don't sanctify you. A better term I, I believe we could use for this, brothers and sisters, is that the seeking of immediate self-gratification. We all have those tendencies towards being self-gratified. Again, I say it that it's the getting of what we want. When we want it, how we want it, and whatever we want it to be that arises in difficult times and it leads us to put our confidence in what we can achieve rather than trusting what the Lord our God can accomplish in our lives. We all face these times where we put more confidence in ourselves than we have in the Lord. You may not say amen, but I know it's true. The reason why we can't give it amen there because we know we are not right in doing it, but doesn't mean we're not tempted towards it. Especially in times where we have been overwhelmed by what seems to be one thing after another. In times of trouble that seem to keep on going and never cease to end. These experiences have had you and I with our finger on the panic button. Thinking it's time for us to end this. 
because we can't keep going through all we've been going through. I, 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 I'm, I'm a little frustrated and, and I, I don't believe that I'm at the end of this. And if I don't get there soon, I'm just ready to be done with it all. And you are ready to get off at the next exit and take another route than the way the Lord is leading you simply because you've had enough of what your life has been. All because the way you're feeling right now has you overwhelmed and for all that you have done and for all that you trusted the Lord for and how you have waited on him, you are now wanting him to reward you the way you believe you deserve to be rewarded. That gratifies you, but doesn't glorify him. David penned the psalm to help us to see our need for placing our confidence in the Lord, not just in the good times, but even in the bad. When David was facing great challenges in his life, he found that looking to the Lord in these times was necessary so that he avoid the temptation of instant gratification that he himself was experiencing like we do. If the setting of the psalm, we could put ourselves somewhere to understand why David wrote this psalm and how this psalm would be situated. It's somewhere in the experience of where David was anointed as king, but was not yet enthroned as king. And he therefore had the authority by his anointing where he could have thrown around his weight. Where he could have told people, do you know who I am? You better check my credentials. And all of us sometimes want to bow up on and, and press on others that you better recognize that I've got some power. I've got some influence. I, 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 I justify myself by myself. And, and that's the temptation that David does not allow to overtake him. Instead, he puts his trust in the Lord. And when we learn like David to put our trust in the Lord, we don't put things out there that have us trying to lord it over others. Rather, we yield ourselves to what the Lord allows to happen, knowing that in the process of it all, the Lord knows how to make this thing work out so that we experience his goodness in our lives. Therefore, David, although he would have faced challenges from those who he expected to be loyal, but we're not. Although he had opportunities that should have been open to him of welcome and appreciation for him, David instead finds himself facing adversaries and enemies on every side. David found more relief inside of caves hiding than he did in the presence of those to whom he had committed his own allegiance. David found himself in circumstances where trouble was at every turn and even David's own family caused him some grief and some heartache and some frustration. David was in every place where David could have sought his own relief, yet instead he turned to the Lord. And I hope that you catch that right there because there's moments where self-relief in the moment, getting out of it all seems easy. And, and we don't always want to immediately turn to the Lord. But if we recognize the Lord like David did, we'll realize that the Lord is our light and our salvation. And whom shall we fear? We, we will say the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And where we find such assurance, say to God, and hear the bold declaration of David and take it and make it our own, we'll notice that every situation we find ourselves in, that where we trust deeply in the Lord, he will resolve it before we can try to find our way to get ready to get out of it. Don't you give up so fast. Don't you run because it's been hard. Don't you quit on the Lord. You keep looking to him and know that if your Lord is a deliverer, if your Lord can see you through this, that if he's going to be the one that gets you out, he's already lit the way. You just got to keep on following him. Find your strength in the Lord, saints. Know that he will bolster your strength and you don't have to give in to everything that seems to shake you and rock you in ways that you never thought you'd experience in your life because the Lord gives strength to those who will trust in him. 
David declares this in his confidence that even as he's being tested and though he knows he is anointed to be king but is not yet sitting on the throne from which he will rule he refuses to allow himself to relieve himself in his own satisfaction instead David says I'm going to look to the Lord do I have any saints that can testify today that you have found yourself taking the long gaze down the difficult road of your life only to find yourself then turning around and looking to the Lord and seeing that in the midst of it all, the Lord has been right there. Anybody who can testify that when you saw the Lord, you saw that the Lord wasn't just standing by looking at you, watching you go through this thing, but the Lord was right there in the midst of it, working on things, helping you see him and know that his great strength is not something that just sees you in the moment, but sees you continually through each and every day. And that's why you got this one and said, this is the day. That the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, that's what David helps us to see. Because David recognized that when we look to the Lord, we can trust that he will keep us in the midst of the situations that challenge us on every side. David says that when we are challenged, we don't have to worry because we will find that the Lord will hide us in his tabernacle. Has anybody ever been hidden by the Lord that he's brought you in and kept you? And while everything was going on around you of danger and trouble that should have gotten the best and better of you, but he hid you in his pavilion and he protected you. And where you know his protection to be real in your life, you ought to shout right there. My God knows how to hide me yeah <laughs> he, he knows how to hide me and because when we place our confidence in the Lord as David did we'll discover that God will hear our prayers give us direction and he will allow us to be confident enough to say I will see the goodness of the Lord in my days remaining confident does not just happen because we choose it you can't just say that's my choice. See, when you remain confident in the Lord, that means you've got to actively be engaged in what you'll experience of the Lord and trust him that no matter what, that your gratification is not greater than your growth. Ah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your desire to go after what satisfies you is never greater than what God allows you to experience so he can mature you. Uh -huh. Therefore, when we recognize that we cannot choose uh, to allow us to be satisfied or determined to go after what gratifies because God grows us through the difficult moments to know his goodness, to know what he's able to do, to know what he avails to us in that season, we will trust him for the development of our faith. Because out of it, we know the goodness of the Lord. That's what David is saying. That's what David's helping us to grab hold of is that, that, that the goodness of the Lord is not only evident in the good times, but also shows up in the times when life challenges us in ways that we never knew we'd be challenged by life. You didn't know that sickness would arise while you're planning to go on vacation. You didn't know you get that call of the loss of a loved one. You didn't know that they were already planning to do budget cuts and you were a part of the cut and you were going to not show up on Monday and have a job. You didn't know these things were going to happen. Yet, in the same time, you didn't know these challenges would come, but you knew that God was still good. Where we know the goodness of the Lord, that means we know that he does not just show up when things are great. He keeps on being good when things don't seem that great in our outlook for ourselves. David helps say that the Lord is still good in spite of it all. And that's why we can see that David remains confident in God's goodness, saints of God. Because David remembered that he had seen trouble before. And the Lord delivered him. 
He had found safety and security from the Lord because the Lord had protected him before. And he had been forsaken by family and those who depend on him early on. Don't you remember when he got anointed? He was the last one that they called into the house. David understood the route that the Lord had seen him through. And when David could recall what the Lord had done, he could be assured of the goodness of the Lord and where he was right now. And if I've got any saints of God who have an instant recall right now and can remember where God was good to you in the past, you ought to shout and praise him right now because if he was good, then he's going to be even gooder now and he's going to bless me in my life and the ways that he's promised and assured me that even as I go through this, I don't have to worry because he's still good. Ah. David said if he's good, he's going to provide for me. He's going to take care of me. He's going to bring me to a place where the rough path becomes smooth. And he's going to allow me in my teachable spirit to be able to learn from him how to deal with the times I'm facing. You have to remain teachable, don't you know? See, sometimes we, we get to a place in ourselves where we forget that we still need to learn of God, experience and understanding from God. That we would spend time with God in his word so that he can grow us through his word. And as long as God's word is living, all of us have the opportunity to experience some growth. But here's the catch. All of your growth won't come in comfortable places. All of your growth won't happen when you find that you got everything you need and feel satisfied and at peace with life. No, a lot of your growth is going to come when you're facing some obstacles that oppose you, some people that don't like you, some things that you never thought would happen to you going to show up and that's when you're going to find out how good God is and you're going to grow. Saints of God, it's time that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That we say, well, what do we do after we celebrate the resurrection? We keep on growing in the one who reminds us and lets us know that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. And after he died and he got up early on that Sunday morning with all power in his hands, life wasn't over. Life was just beginning. And where life just begins, that means you're going to have to know that in this time in life, it's going to be better because I don't serve a savior that's still in the tomb. I save a risen Lord who is able to help me to know and trust in all times and in every way that everything's going to be all right because he's still good. The goodness of the Lord matures us. Goodness of the Lord motivates us. The good of the Lord makes us to remain confident that we, seal, we shall see the salvation of the Lord. That's what we find when our faith is resolute, unwavering in the goodness of the Lord. And it will always encourage us to have a different response. When your faith stays steadfast in the Lord who is good, it will always encourage a different response. Can we admit something? Can we, can we talk? Can we talk? Can we really be honest? There are times that all of us must confess that we almost lost heart. It was hard. It wasn't what we thought it would be. It wasn't what we expected. But we found ourselves at times where we almost lost heart. What we came into our life each day expecting, we came to experience the opposite of. And if we're honest, Giving up felt easier than holding on. Yet that the Lord's goodness availed to us the opportunity to recall who he is and that in spite of all that did not appear too good to us, the Lord shows up as our light and our salvation and allowed us to see how he works all things together for our good. 
Th therefore, losing heart, almost, we were close, but you found yourself holding on. You almost lost heart, but you found that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You almost lost heart, but then you remember the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You almost lost heart. But then you remember, I will bless the Lord at all times. That means in the good, the bad, the indifferent, the uncertain, the strange, the foreign, whatever. I said, I will bless him and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. I almost. But then I found my praise. And, and when you found your praise, you responded differently. You reacted in a way that people didn't comprehend. You started shouting and thanking him because you know that he was going to get you through this. And he was going to make sure you slept through that night. And when you got up the next day, the trouble might still be there. But so is the goodness of the Lord. And so you respond differently now than what you would have. Because you know what your almost look like. But you know what your praise does better in. So you shout right now and give him praise because the Lord gave you a different response. You almost losing with heart no longer is an option for you. Instead, you look expectantly to the fact that his saving grace will show up not when you get to heaven. But in the now of your life, you will see his salvation working in and through your life. That is why you respond differently to what you are facing, because he keeps on doing the good work in your life that assures you that no matter what you face any day now, what he does and his goodness will take place and you're going to live to see it happen. That, that's your testimony. You're going to live to see it happen. I, I, I ain't got to wait till they, they, they commit me into the ground. I, I ain't got to wait till they, my family is over me trying to make decisions on whether they should pull the plug and let me breathe my last breath. No, I'm going to live to see it happen. And I need some saints that are testify that you know you've been through some troubled times. You know you faced some challenges and it seemed like you were at your end. But because you did not give up, you did not give in, and you know the goodness of the Lord is still abundant and active in your life, you going to live to see it happen. The good of his provision, the good of his protection, the good of his power working mightily in you. You can count on the Lord and his goodness that will move you beyond the failing heart to the hope that it shall come to pass. And that's where growth over gratification shows up because you had to grow to that place. You won't always as spiritually mature as you are now. You, you didn't have the abundance of certainty of faith that you have now. You had to grow to that place. Because your gratification kicked in real quick. And that's why some of us can't praise because we still have some gratification struggles. But just keep hanging on in there. Your faith going to grow if you trust the one who's good. Waiting finds resolve. Your waiting finds resolve. Your resolve is your determination to know that the Lord's strengthening of your heart will take place when you stop trying to figure out all the details of how he's going to work it out. I know that's not comfortable for us because we like to know everything. We want to know our business and everybody else's business too. Some of us go on social media just so we can know what everybody else is doing, where everybody else is going, what everybody else is thinking about. We want to read everybody else. But we want to know everything. We just want to know it. And I, it's understandable. I, I, I know we just uh, people who like to know. I'm not calling you nosy. You might be nosy-ish, but I'm not calling you nosy. We like to know things. 
And oftentimes our desire to know things can have us trying to figure out all the details even of our own lives. But when we learn to wait on the Lord and know his strength in our heart, that means we have let go of trying to figure out all the details. We don't keep trying to tie up all the loose ends. We don't try to find a nice neat conclusion to the story in the midst of what's taking place in our lives right now. Instead, we make the choice to give it all to the Lord. Yeah, give it, give it all to him. See, your gratifying self not only seeks what you want now, but also seeks to have it your way or no way at all. Even if that means you're going to cut some corners, you're going to cheapen the challenges that you face that are designed to develop you, 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 you'll, you'll do whatever you can to get out of this. But trouble, trouble has a way of being evident in our existence so that we come to a place where we realize that we can't fix all the trouble we face. But we say, Lord, we're going to turn it over to you because we know you'll work it out. That's where we find his goodness growing us and strengthening our faith. It is the experience of the Lord's strengthening that causes us to remain confident in him. That he alone will see us through this no matter how long, how daunting, how difficult the journey may be. We won't give in to our own gratification because his goodness has far more in it than what we can get for ourselves. And you trust and believe that. I need you to help me preach this last part and tell your neighbor, trust the process. Trust the process. In the book, Leading Things You Did Not Start, David Yergin suggests that the destination isn't what defines you. The process defines you. Let me say that one more time. The destination where God is taking you isn't what defines you. The process that he allows you to go through is what defines you. In the depths of every heart and soul that needs these words to be dropped, that the process the waiting, the developing, the pain, the failure, the tears, the anger, the uncertainty, the struggles, the time, all of these are a part of the process. So you're able to trust the process. Here's why we've got to trust the process and the Lord of the process. There's good news because the process is not experienced absent of the goodness of the Lord. I, I, I thought y'all would be, I could go ahead and close right there. And since somebody said I hooped last week, I thought I might hoop this week right there. But I guess I'm just going to have to shout this one out. See, y'all miss y'all opportunity. The good news is that the process that you're in is not absent, not void of the goodness of the Lord. That ought to all cause a shout because if his goodness is in the midst of the process, we don't need to abandon the process. We need to yield ourselves to God who is good and knows how to make his goodness work in the midst of all that we're going through. His goodness goes with you. His goodness is going to keep you safe. His goodness is going to supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Don't give up on him and his goodness because his goodness shall follow you all the days of your life. And you can shout surely right there. This is why I refuse, thanks to God to be afraid or fear in the trying times that have come into my life. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. And that light who is the light of the world is Jesus Christ. 
and he is the light who keeps me from walking in darkness. The light when in the words of the songwriter, I almost let go. I felt like I couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down, but God held me close so I wouldn't let go. Anybody can testify with me right there? See, God's mercy kept you. It kept me so we wouldn't let go. And even when we thought we'd give up, we found ourselves right on the edge of our breakthrough, even though we couldn't see it because the devil had us, but Jesus came and grabbed us and he held us close and he wouldn't let go. And if I have this say that can testify right there, you ought to go ahead and praise him as we go on out from here. Because I'm so glad that because of his goodness that we don't pursue our own gratification because he's growing our faith. He's maturing our confidence so that we remain confident that he shall see us through it all. Our heart is strengthened by the assurance that we'll see his salvation and in spite of the way things may appear, regardless of who was against you, I know that the Lord is for us and his goodness keeps on showing up over and over and over again and that's why I will not waver. That's why I'll wait on him. That's why I will not worry. I'm going to wait on him for he strengthens me. He strengthens you through every struggle, through every trial, through every tribulation and no matter who comes against us, we will remain confident and I pray that'll be your testimony this week as you face whatever comes your way even if it's in the leisure of your time of spring break, you keep on trusting that he'll hide you he'll set you on a rock and that's why you can praise him because God gives you everything you need and his goodness to know that you can remain confident in him. Give God praise. I will remain confident in him that I shall see the salvation of the Lord in my days. I, I, I don't know if you're going to see it in your day, but I know I'm going to see it in my days. But if it is the fact and testimony for you that you're going to see him in your days, you ought to go ahead and shout right now. Praise him right now. Thank him right now. Glorify him right now. Acknowledge him for all he is right now. Because our God is good and his mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Don't put your gratification ahead of your growth. Don't trade your gratification for your growth. Because when God grows us, he accompanies in our growth his goodness. His goodness that knows better than we know. His goodness that establishes us so that we don't fall. His goodness that can create smooth paths and rough experiences. Keep on trusting in him. We stand with me. Growing our faith is a great challenge and the Lord wants us to remain confident in him through the experience of it all and oftentimes remaining confident becomes a challenge because it's easier to pick what we want rather than what he wills but I pray today that you remain confident in him through whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're facing, against the people who turned on you, whether friends or family, even if it's on your job, you're dealing with folks that you really know are getting on your last nerve. Don't you give up. You stay in the fight and remain confident in the Lord that you will see his salvation, his deliverance, work in your life because of his goodness towards us. Wait on the Lord and he will strengthen your heart. 
Wait, I say, on the Lord. Perhaps you're here today, you've been struggling, you've been wrestling, you've been fighting, you've been dealing with it and thinking you could handle it. Because every time something came up, you did what you thought was best. But your best just ain't good enough. But there's one who knows better, knows all things, and can do all things and accomplish in our lives what we cannot achieve ourselves. And his name is Jesus. And our relationship with him allows us to see that the shadows of our situations do not stretch farther than the light he shines of salvation into our lives. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Perhaps you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. We invite you to come and receive Christ. Know him for yourself. Know the goodness of the Lord. To see you through the times that you're facing even now. We invite you to come. And if you don't have a church home and you've been coming by worshiping and you've been coming by and visiting a few churches here and there, you've been saying, I got to find me a place where I can grow and I can be a part of a church family that really loves the Lord and doesn't just want from me, but will also impart into me. Well, here's a place. We invite you to come and receive. Join with us and be a part of a church that's growing and that God is doing great things in and among. So those who have received Christ as a personal Savior and those who also desire to join with us here at Bula Grove, we invite you to come as our praise team sings. Because all my been faithful and all my life you have been so We're going to pray for them. Amen. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your goodness. Your goodness that continues to show up in our lives. And we pray now for those who are dear to us and who bless us week after week. They endure the climate, they endure the seasons, and they continue to show up and serve with smiles on their faces, even though they're going through things in their lives. They are kind enough to greet those who sometimes don't greet them back. They're sincere enough to give direction to those who don't always say thank you, but yet they stay faithful because they trust in so we pray for our security ministry, O oh Lord. And we pray, Lord God, that you continue to strengthen them. May their role in the ministry of the church be lifted and celebrated 
because they do something that many won't, but yet they endure by their trust and they're counting on you to see them through. Lord, at times they're in situations where they don't know who drives by and who comes around in the church, but yet they don't cause people to be in a position where they feel threatened, they let them feel welcome. So that harm is to pass our way. So we thank you for protecting them as they watch over us. I thank you because they continue to show up for events and ministry opportunities, experiences, and they do and they stay to the last so that everybody goes and then they leave. At the same time, they're here early before things get started. Giving up their time, giving up their efforts and energy. I thank you for them. Lord, so I pray that you would bless them abundantly, strengthen them continually, give them the joy that is the strength that comes from you, that in all things they do in serving, they'll continue to say, I'm glad that I can serve in the house of the Lord one more time. Be with them, Lord God, and may we continually recognize and acknowledge them for all they do and all they are to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. We love you, Lord, and thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. Be with us, Lord. Now, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, to Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forevermore. and upcoming events. about the Beulah Grove Baptist Church, please check us out on YouTube and Facebook or visit our website at beulahgrove.org.